So, you know, I think a lot of people looking at the alts run and saying to themselves, too much, too fast. I'm just going to go in there and short it. And uh, several people got caught uh, betting against the wrong uh, uh, tokens or coins. And in this case, for example, Chainlink is just a monster, right? I mean, people love Chainlink. The whole community is behind it. Celsius partnered with, <coughs> Celsius partnered with them. So I think the momentum behind Chainlink was so strong that a few short sellers who thought they could pick the top and uh, is just, you know, they got in trouble, they got liquidated, which got Chainlink to all-time highs, and uh, win, big win for the community. Seeing uh, momentum starting to build, there's FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. Uh, uh, the retail guy feels like, oh my God, finally Ethereum or Bitcoin or something else breaking out. I got to get on that ship as soon as possible. And what happens is that the large institutions, they wait for the crescendo. They're looking at, okay, how many searches there are, right? For this or that term. The, the, they, they have basically uh, the community heartbeat at their fingertips. And they know when it's crescendos, right? When it kind of hits the top. And then they just pounded it, right? They just short the whole market, either through BitMEX or through other derivatives or exchanges. And, and what that causes is, is cascade of liquidations. And all the people who pile in get hurt. That's why we always say to people who are not sophisticated investors, you don't know when to get in, you don't know when to get out. So, so instead of trying to time the market, the best you can do is, is, again, join a community that is acting in your best interest. Again, no one on Celsius gets liquidated. No, everybody on Celsius earns interest every week. So what is better, you know? The chance or the hope that you will double your money or triple your money, but you can get wrecked and lose all your money, or the guaranteed return that you know you can get, like right now, you can earn 11% in your stable coins with no risk, right? Or minimal risk, right? Basically, we do all the work. We make sure that we only lend to people who can pay us back. We make sure we get collateral. And you can see Celsius is delivering through thick and thin, through March 12th, through, uh, you know, basically end of July where, where everybody got liquidated. So, you know, you have to make a choice or at least put half of the bag in, in something safe that yields for you, that creates that retirement plan that pays you every week. And you want to you want to take a little bit of risk. You think you, you know how to time the market. Great. Play with a small piece of your overall uh, investment portfolio instead of with all of your money. I, I was saying it when Bitcoin was four and five thousand, and uh, people looked at me and said, "What are you talking about? We're in the middle of another bear market." And I was like, "No, you don't understand how Bitcoin works, you know." So, so we're at uh, whatever eleven thousand. Again, I said we have to we have to break twelve and fourteen thousand. Those are the really key levels that we haven't broken. We broke the two through the ten thousand. That was good. We stayed above the ten thousand. That's very good. Now we have to break the 12,000. You can see us trying to get there and you see people piling up and shorting uh, Bitcoin at those levels because that's a big resistance level. So if we break to 12, if we break to 14, then we're going to get to 20 very, very quickly. New highs before the end of the year, not changing my projections. Look it up. January this year, I've been saying that. So. Nothing has changed. I'll give you the upside story and the downside story. The upside story is the government continues to print money. They're about to get another huge amount of, uh, of, of stimulus, which is again, more money printing, more dilution in dollar terms, which is going to push gold, silver, Bitcoin to new highs. And all of that is good for Bitcoin. So if you have enough Bitcoin, you're going to be just fine. Uh, or Bitcoin and gold, right? Combination of the two. Gold, gold is going to raise. Uh, gold is the one that's going to rise the least. Silver is going to be in the middle, and Bitcoin is going to be the most. So, if you want to put a third, a third, a third, great. Or half and half. Uh, pick your choice. But uh, you definitely need to diversify, and you need to make sure you have an again non-correlated assets. These three are non-correlated assets. Or I should go like this, probably. You know. Uh, and uh, the downside scenario is uh, Corona gets much worse. Unemployment gets much worse. The people who are saving today, 
the United States is saving 19% of its income, meaning people are not spending and they're saving, which is very good, right? But all that money is coming from the government. It's not really coming from earnings. So when that faucet is closed, people are going to start to spend the savings. Spend the saving means they're selling their Bitcoin. They're selling their gold. And that's going to put pressure on the prices. So we may, again, we may see that rise up, a very quick rise up. We're going to get new highs. But as the depression slash global recession hits us harder because of the disease, because of bankruptcies, you can see brands announcing every day that they're going out of business. So when that happens uh, and liquidations and stock market taking a hit, people are going to have to sell some of their coins. That's going to put price again. So you're going to see a W basically. Uh, instead of just seeing an up to the right uh, increase for, of price. So, so it's, it's inflation and the increase in money printing, which is good for Bitcoin, fighting it out with people's need for cash to actually uh, keep paying their bills, keep living. And, um, you know, those two are fighting each other uh, to get Bitcoin or Ethereum to new highs.